This video will contain all the tips and tricks that you need to put together a small cabinet or any cabinet with the Festool Domino Connectors. Stay tuned. All right, Sedge, so I just got this box of connectors and uh, it looks a little confusing. <laughs> it sure does. Um, these are all the pieces and parts to put together basically four different styles of connectors for the okay. 500, okay? It's all broken down, like I said, in pieces and parts. It is not confusing. And if you watch the entire video, you'll understand two numbers. Repeat after me, Big D. 15. 15. 28. 28. Okay, watch the video. So everything inside of here builds these four components. Two of them are for a center panel, whether using a domino cutter or using an LR32 millimeter through hole. You'll understand these as we build or two right angle connectors. One of them using an eight millimeter domino and one of them using the already established 32 millimeter holes. So all of this builds that and it, it comes with a jig to drill out everything. You'll understand all of it. The only thing you have to get is an eight millimeter cutter. Okay, Big D, time to change the cutter. Okay, so this is a cabinet I'm just holding in with clamps. It's going to be very small. You can use it for a variety of things. I'm going to probably use it in my office as a little curiosity cabinet. Um, we're not going to put a back groove in here. Okay. Because I want to put it so I can turn it around. I might, okay. Um, I have it in tension with the clamps because I want to talk about building the cabinet and labeling everything. Okay. Because I'm going to show you how this can expand and we'll work a center panel later on. But these are just the, this is a basic cabinet where the top and the bottom always go between the sides in cabinetry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some labeling and I wanna do this right, so I'm gonna turn it on its side, but this is basically the orientation. I've already uh, punched the uh, 32 millimeter holes in here. So we could do adjustable shelves or we could do fixed shelves. All right. So whenever you're doing cabinetry and you want a flush butt joint here, this is either my top or bottom. I'm gonna do a little bit of labeling because it's gonna help me understand where to put the plate of the domino, right? So it's a just, look, it's just a simple mark and this is where the plate will go here and here. And this is my outside. So I'm going to label on this piece I'm going to go horizontal. On this piece, I'm going to go vertical. We're only gonna put two connectors in this because it's not gonna have a lot of shear strength in the middle. Okay. But I'll show you where, when we do a center panel, we'll do a, a through hole there. Okay. Okay, we'll do a, a center hole. So as we go through this, we're gonna remember the four laws of the domino yeah. and all the domino videos we've done on the Sedge Tool channel. But remember, I like to label. And there's a couple of components here. I'm gonna put the plate height on this will always be 20. And that's right here. I'm gonna set it up right here. You put the eight millimeter domino in there. That's a permanent setting. Okay. That's how this whole system works off when we're doing three quarter material. We're gonna be plunging horizontal here, so there's another number. Okay, on this one, the plunge depth, the PD will be 28. Okay, and then on the inside, I also do this. So I remember, because we're gonna do these on all four. Okay, that's where we're gonna drill out the access hole for the cross anchors. You'll okay. understand as we do this. All right, so this one's basically ready to go. On here, the vertical, the of course, Pl plate height will be 20 on everything. This mm -hmm. is a quick reference because we, we're gonna have a bunch of components here to punch out. And once we've labeled everything, we can knock it out wicked quick. So also the plunge depth on this one will be 15 because we're plunging vertical. Those are those two numbers to us remember, right? Absolutely. All right. All right, Sedge, what's next? <laughs> we got to plunge a eight millimeter uh, mortise okay. to accept this. All right. <laughs> You're asking what's this? It's basically a wedge anchor. Oh. So when we push this in and we put this post in 
okay? This will spread open and anchor in here on oh. the vertical pieces on the sides. Okay. The whole piece or the whole domino connector system is based off this little recess in here, tapered. Because of those measurements we're working with, you know, the 28 depth, what'll happen is on the other side or the shelves or the tops and bottoms, it's this little hex. You see how it's conical? This acts like, and when it finds its equilibrium, it draws the whole piece together. It acts kind of like a draw bore. Wow. Okay, so it's a very well thought out system. So what we're gonna do is we have our domino set mm -hmm. at a depth of 15, and we're gonna rely on these two uh, flappers here. Okay. And what that does is we're gonna go from here to here, and each one you'll see lines up with these holes. Okay, we're not gonna work off the, the back groove, and we're only gonna put two domino connectors. That should be strong enough. Okay. Okay, and that dimension from here to the center is 37 millimeter. So I'll do a couple, you do a couple, we'll punch it right out right, on these two good. sides. Everything is done in the tight position here. Good point. Okay, good thing to make sure. And I'm just gonna take that in, grab the post, Give me in here, cameraman. You can see, because I went from 37 to punch this in, how that lines up perfect with the connectors. Awesome. Okay, Big D, let's just take these and press fit them in. Okay. Just like this, and just like this. Then we're gonna take these posts, and we're gonna screw them in. You're gonna notice, right up top, there's a little three millimeter recess, and you can turn that in, just like that. I'll have you do that. Okay. So you know, Big D, you were using that little recess. The other thing that's nice about these posts is across the flats, just like any bit tip, it's a quarter inch. Oh. So you can actually use, and if you have a lot of these to do, just make sure it's on clutch setting. I could spin that in just like that. Oh, wow. And that's slick. And I could just take it like this because you're gonna have a lot of these to do over time and say you're knocking down a bunch. Mm -hmm. The one thing that you wanna do, and I'm gonna bring that recess in there like that, okay? Those have to face, so I, what I do is I bottom it out, that spreads the, the piece there, the wedge anchor, and I turn that so it's inside, just like that. And I'll have you do the same thing. Okay. So as I say, this part here is the first part of the equation. Okay. So let's flip it around, lock it back in, and do the other four. Remember the other number? 28. Okay, so we're working on the tops and bottoms of the cabinet. And we want to make sure that we're plunging in. And look at our marks here. This is the outside of the cabinet. That's our witness mark. That's our witness mark. So we know we got to lay our plate here. Okay, it's still set at 20, but we're going to go 28. Okay. Okay, and what we're building up for is a place for this to live. Okay. Okay, now remember, I'm hanging off the plane of the table, mm -hmm. so I'm not sitting on the table. That's why we have the setup like this. Okay, so that's a 28 millimeter deep mortise. Now what we have to do is we have to make room for this cross anchor, and that's where we'll start. Okay. Okay, so to create the access hole for the cross anchor in that little conical uh, hex screw, 
We're going to use this bit and a Festool drill. Okay, and we'll have a drilling jig. It comes with the, the kit. Okay. Okay, and where this goes is this is an eight millimeter thick tenon, and it's automatically adjusts. So we just gotta, that's where my access hole is. I'll take it like this and I bring it down and I just hold it up like this and lock it in. Okay. Okay, so when you do these, right, you A, you have to use dust extraction, but two, what you want to do is you want to make sure you're drilling all the way down and you, this uh, brass piece bottoms out in here. So that gives you a little more clearance in the bottom so that will align with the post. Okay. All right. Go ahead and turn on the dust extractor. Okay. And when you start this, start it inside the bushing. Okay. Okay. And you got to punch it all the way down. So I always hold it in tension, but if you need to, there's recesses on here if you feel more comfortable locking it in with the clamp. Okay. So this is that conical hex screw, and this is your cross anchor, and you just thread it in like that, and we're going to need eight of them. All right, Sedge, what's next? Okay, now, we just bored those holes. Yep. What I always make sure is all the dust is out. Okay. And it is. So we're going to put these in, cross anchors. We put the little screws in there, and we're going to aim them so the hole is facing out, so it'll accept that post. And you're going to push it all the way in. That's why I had you punch all the way in with that. See how it falls in? you got to kind of wedge them in there a little. Okay, so they sit below the surface. That's why I had you punch the drill bit all the way to that pot right there. All right, Sedge, what are these? Okay. Remember when I said aim them out. So we're going to pretend this is in the side of the cabinet. Okay. Okay, and these are our tops and bottoms. That has to aim in there. But what happens is these can jostle around in there. So what these are for is they hold them in perfect alignment. Oh. Okay. That's cool. So let's just place these in here. And I also want to point out there's a notch in here. And toward the end of the video, you're going to see what that notch is for. Okay. So what you want to do is sometimes press it fitting them in. They don't sit flush. You want them to sit flush. So I just take a, a dead blow hammer like that. That way they're, they'll butt right up and they won't create space. Okay. Okay, so we know that's the inside because uh -huh. that's where these pieces and parts go. We have these facing inside to accept these conical uh, grub screws. And I'll just slip it in like this. Okay, and the nice thing is it's fairly adjustable. And there's a little wiggle room in it. And as I do this, this will be my front edge. You'll see where I can bring that right together at a perfect 90. Nice. Okay, we'll just verify that those are facing in. And we'll put them right together. And that is, oh, big D, that came together perfect. Nice. We'll just tilt it up and tighten those screws just like this. And the nice thing about this, this is uh, a ball end that I can actually get it in at an angle and tighten everything up and bring those edges right together. And that draws everything absolutely perfect. All right, Sedge. What about these? These are just out. We have... Aha! <laughs> these are the cover caps. All right, and you just place them right there. Nice. But what I would do for this veneer is I would get some walnut paint or DACA paint that matches the veneer, and that'll just go just like that, and you can slide them right in like this. Perfect. <laughs> All right, Sedge, so what about these parts? You said something about a center panel? Exactly, this is a completely expandable system. So what if we take this side off, move it out here, and we bore through holes here with the 32 millimeter system, and we do two more tops and bottoms, and we can expand it out. So I will go over these connectors with you now. All right. We got to plunge vertically again. Okay. And we got to cut. We got to cut through mortises with a domino. So we're going to go from 37, 37 using the flaps. Okay. 
This is 18 millimeter plywood. We gotta make sure we're gonna go through. So our plunge depth is now, gonna, we're gonna set it at 20. So when I spin this apart, this will go in the mortise and settle into that. Oh, okay. Okay, from either side. But I got some really good tips and tricks to make this work perfectly flush. Okay, so Big D, I'm gonna take this apart. Okay. Whoopsie, all right. I also want you to know there's a little flange. Okay. okay. I got a really good tip for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna spin this one in and you'll see how it'll nestle together. But remember, this has to finally f face in. Okay. So we'll just take it like this and you'll see how that goes together and it'll suck right in there just like that. Okay, just make sure it's tight. Okay. And then what I do is I make sure they're in like that. Perfect. So let's get the rest of them. So let's expand the cabinet. Let's do it. We've got the center panel, we've got the extra pieces parts. Okay, so I'm gonna take it on its side. I loosened up the, the hex screws and I'm gonna take it apart like this. Okay. Now, remember when I showed you there's a slight flange there. We want it to sit perfectly flush with this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a domino eight millimeter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it on here. All right, just like this and just slightly tap that because that will accept that little flange in there and won't hurt anything. Okay. And I'll do it on all the pieces and parts that go up against that center panel. See how I knock it in. Good. So let's see if this goes in. All of those tapers are facing inward and we'll slide it right in here like this, like this, and there's our center panel, just like that. Wow. So when I put those other new pieces together like this, I wanna make sure that these are recessed here for the center panel, and I'll just place it on here like this, and I'll tighten all the screws up. Now this one, that little screw was put in too tight. Now it'll fit perfectly flush, and you'll see, perfect. Nice. Okay, so there's that center panel, and now, We'll put this in here like this, and we'll do our final side. So what do you think, Big D? I think it's pretty cool how it's expandable. What else can we do with it? Okay, so hang in there. <laughs> I want to show you a couple more pieces and parts. Okay, so this is also a through connector. Oh, okay. So say, I know we have these holes bored here for adjustable shelves, which we can do. Mm -hmm. But what if we want to put a fixed shelf in the middle here, okay? It, this is constantly, I keep saying expandable, but it can grow and grow. Um, this piece here, okay, is another right angle piece. And where it goes, and Chris get in here like here, I could take that and it goes in the existing 32 millimeter system. Okay. And then this one, hang in there, Chris, will go and we wanna do two shells here, two fixed shells. I could take this piece and thread it through the hole here just like this, it's a little tight, but I can bring it in, and now I can do two, two shelves this way, and I don't have to create a new animal. I have it already done with these extra shelves. That's awesome. All right, Sage, first of all, love it, but how are we gonna finish this? Okay, well, first we gotta take it all apart. Okay. Because we know when we spray it, material lays down on flat but we have all these components together here and we gotta sand it still. Yeah. Okay, so earlier in the video, I showed you this little notch, okay, in mm -hmm. here. And where that is, is right here. So if you take, you could take it all out and put it all back together. Oh. Okay, so if I take this, that's what the notch is for. I could take this, take this out, sand it, finish it flat. Nice. Okay, so the other piece of the puzzle, we could take all of these out with that little notch, set them aside, and it all goes back together. We can sand it and flay it down and finish flat. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then the other part of the puzzle are these posts in here. What you need to do is take these out, set them aside, and then what I like to do, and you can take that piece of blue tape because if I put it just like this, this is gonna be hidden anyhow. It doesn't matter if this is finished when it goes together. Okay. So now you can spray the whole thing and be done with it. Sounds good. So big D, there you go. That's a basic overview of the domino connectors for the DF500. And you can see 
once you understand it's just four pieces that it's all componentized to work with one another, it's not that confusing. No, not at all. Okay, as we always wrap this up, be positive. Stay sharp. Wicked sharp. Wicked sharp.